Many festivals in North America celebrate the art and culture of Native American people. Their crafts, artwork, and accessories date back many centuries. Modern Native Americans say upholding artistic traditions helps them maintain their unique culture. But many current artisans also believe to advance the culture, they shouldn't look exclusively back to the past. That's the attitude of Mohawk quilter Carla Hemlock. We'll shine the spotlight on this excellent artisan we met in Cooperstown, New York at the Fenimore Art Museum. Each individual petal is put on. Quilter Carla Hemlock upholds Native traditions and expands on them with her artwork. She demonstrated her quilting next to her artisan husband, Babe. The couple participated in the Native American art series at the Fenimore Art Museum and made their appearance during the museum's Iroquois Cultural Festival. Where were you born and raised? I was born in Ganawage. Our community is right outside of Montreal. When did you start making the quilts? Uh, we come from a community of women that are extremely talented. Someone's always doing something. And uh, at, when I was expecting my first child, my friends told me, it's time for you to make your first quilt. You have to make it for your son. And I had no clue what I was doing. And they just kind of guided me along and showed me what to do. And from there, I haven't stopped. You actually maybe even went a little beyond what they were expecting you to do later on with making these very artistic quilts. Some of them are even in frames. Would you say they are traditional or more contemporary? Oh, total contemporary. Uh, our traditional work is not even beadwork. Uh, we used to do quill work, uh, porcupine quill work, and moose hair embroidery. That's our traditional. The beads came with the trade, when they would trade for uh, the pots, the pans, the, the beads. So we adapted to beadwork, and the beads were just uh, probably a lot easier to, uh, uh, to gather. There were, we would have cottage industries in our community where a group of ladies would get together and make uh, little souvenirs for either circuses or world trade center fairs, different things like that. So the ladies in my mother's family were all the beaters. And the only quilter in our family was my great grandmother. And when I took to quilting, the ladies in the family would just say, well, you take after her now because you're quilting. But then I started adapting some of our beadwork. I thought, hey, let me, let me incorporate some of the beadwork and see what happens. And it, uh, it, it works, it works. Well, in these modern times, how important is it to you that you uphold these old traditions? Oh, I think it's really important. I mean, we can do lots of contemporary work to uh, show who we are now, but I really feel that uh, it, it's, it's real important for us to keep that connection to, to our past. I mean, you can always spot, if you go into a market, you know Iroquoian work just by some of the designs. You'd see a couple of designs and people go, okay, that's Iroquoian. Uh, one time we, we were doing a show and I had this great big quilt up and it was a turtle quilt. And I would have uh, a non-native person come and look at the quilt and go, oh my gosh, that's a turtle. Why did she do that? And then another non-Mohawk non would come over and go, oh my gosh, she made a turtle. And you would have an Iroquois person come over and go, oh my gosh, she did the turtle. So it's three different reactions, all for this one quilt. And what they don't realize is when we put a turtle up there, that's representative of the earth. For us, that's the earth. So. Uh, native people right across already knew that represents the earth, but by putting my designs around it, you automatically knew it was Iroquoian because of those traditional designs. I have a, another quilt, and it's called The Faces That Are Yet To Come. And once again, I, I did the turtle, but inside of the turtle, I made different faces that were forming from conception, and the, the faces grew out. And we have, um, uh, we're, we're brought up, all of us, with this. Um, you have to be very responsible for all of the decisions that you make collectively because those are going to impact the faces that are yet to come. What I wanted to get out there really is for people to, you know, we're really at a critical time in our, in our history, and not just for Mohawks, but like for everybody. 
And I don't think we're making good decisions. I really don't. And for me, I had to put that out there, you know, just to get it out there that we really, really have to watch those decisions that we make. You've received some very high honors for your work. What are some of those? I have an iron working quilt that I did in 2008 and the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. purchased it. And then this year I did something called the Treaty Cloth shirt and they also came to, to purchase that, uh, that shirt. So those are two of the, uh, the big purchases that uh, I have. So those, both of those pieces will be kind of living on a lot longer than I will be. Mountain Lake PBS is producing these Native American artistry pieces in cooperation with the New York State Historical Association's Fenimore Art Museum in Cooperstown, New York. This project is also a partnership with the U.S. Institute of Museum and Library Services. Support for Spotlight segments is provided in part by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.